Having just touched on painting in the previous video, let's talk now about projections, the paint through tool and also projection masking in Mari. The paint through tool is very similar to the paint brush tool, however you use an image instead of plain colour. To start, you're going to need an image loaded into your image manager. From there, all you have to do is drag the image into your workspace and Mari will switch to the paint through tool automatically. Easy! When you have an image that you're painting through, you can transform it to better line up with your model. Holding control will rotate the image, control and shift will let you scale it, either uniformly or in a single axis if you select an edge of the image whilst doing so. You can stand the image down by pressing the apostrophe key, and by using the semicolon, you can make the image repeat so it doesn't matter if your brush goes off the edge of the image. Don't worry about remembering these shortcuts, there's quite a few, and they're all at the very bottom of the Mari window in the tool help bar. To clean paint off of the buffer, I'm just going to hit this button on the bottom left of my toolbar. When projecting with the paint through tool, the same settings that you set up in your painting palette from earlier still apply, such as paint buffer size. Below these settings, something that we didn't touch on in the last video, are the masking options that Mari gives us. This is a way to add modifiers to mask out your paint strokes based on different things. I'm going to turn on Mask Preview Enabled to get a better look at what they do. The one I use the most is Edge Mask. Here you have the ability to mask out parts of your mesh either angled towards or away from the viewport camera. By changing the settings and having the mask preview enabled, you can see in red what will be masked out. This is really handy when projecting, so you don't accidentally project on glancing angles, giving you large amounts of texture stretching and smearing down the side of your geometry. If we look at the mirror projection tab we covered in the previous video, we can see there is a mask section there too. This uses the plane that we set up to mask one side of the mesh. The positive and negative options will use the axis to mask one side of the mesh, whereas dynamic will change the side of the mesh the mask is on based on the furthest side from the viewport camera. The other masking options here are really powerful as well. So channel masking lets you select a channel you have set up as a mask. Ambient occlusion will use a baked AO to mask out bits. Depth masking lets you set a depth from the camera to use as a mask. And backface mask masks out the backface as your model. Finally, fractal noise lets you set up a noise pattern as a mask. These masks are really useful, but some of these things you can do in a less destructive workflow in masks for your layers or nodes individually. Painting through images is super powerful when combined with other features in Mari. One thing I like to do is use some nice black and white grunge textures to paint with into my mask layer. It's a really quick and easy way to get variety when masking out things like dirt layers and will often give you a more natural result than just a brush preset. Thanks for watching this video and join me in the next one to learn about some more features of Mari. Thank you.